Hi everyone and welcome back to the Bison video blog. It's been way too long since we've been back in the studio with Jeff Kolpak. I'm Dom Izzo as we get set for Summit League tournament time in Sioux Falls. It tips off at the Premier Center on Saturday where the number one and two seeds for both the women and the men will play. The Bison men are the only team there from North Dakota State. They'll play Sunday night at 6 o'clock against IUPUI as they will go in as the five seed after losing their final two games of the regular season. Before we get into talking about what NDSU faces on Sat on Sunday night, I've talked about this numerous times with you that of the time we've covered this league and when NDSU got into it, I, I it's a crapshoot. I don't think anybody knows who can win this tournament come next Tuesday night. I really don't. Are we going to handicap it right now? I think should we, we should. Yes, absolutely. Here's who I think is going to win. I'm taking Nebraska Omaha. Oh, for right. the, here's here's why too because Nebraska Omaha has four of the top two of the top five scores. For the top 11. Now, sometimes you say defense wins championships. Yes. I think this is a weird year. I think this is the year where Omaha, it, it, it's not the top seed is not going to win it. You know, at some point, the Fort top Wayne. seed yeah. is not going to win it. I thought, I think Omaha, it's their first year eligible. They have that 2009 Bison Mojo going okay. where this is the first thing going to qualify. And um, I just think, uh, you know, Devin Patterson's a great player. I, he, they match up to South Dakota State, too. They match up to their guards, Parks and Marshall. They, they you know, they have that quickness. Yep. And I think they have enough underneath to mm. handle Dom. I like that, uh, I like that pick. Uh, South Dakota State is tough to beat uh, inside that building, although the Bison didn't, uh, did it last year. I see where you're going, though, the Omaha with the first year down there. Uh, can I pick the field? Can I just take anybody? Because I think that's no. actually the case that no. I think will win. That's how you weasel your way into the pick weasel. Contest. I won that. I will take South Dakota State. I think the Jacks are going to win it uh, as the two seed. I think they, Why? They, I think they have the most talent. Fort Wayne is, has only been to the championship game once. That was a couple years ago, and then NDSU beat them in 2014. I'm not sold on them. You but saw them Marshall and Biddle are playing hurt. And they were held to 46 points, though. Fort Wayne buzz by NDSU. And I, who knows, if the Bison get by IUPUI, they would play Fort Wayne in the semifinals, and NDSU could win that game. They can win because they don't play know, better defense. Right, but I don't know how well the Bison match up with the Jacks right now. You saw that game in Brookings uh, on Thursday night. Now, Paul Miller back in the lineup. He only played one game. Cabelas was out of that matchup. I don't know how the if they were to play again in Sioux Falls, how that would go for but NDSU. Bison, the, the, the scoring power, Paul Miller is their top scorer, and yes. he's been out. Next guy is like Corey Brown in the league at 17th or 18th. So I don't know if they have enough guys to put it in the hole right now. So you're going with Omaha. I'm going with Omaha. I'm taking the Jacks. On the women's side, we think it's pretty much a no-brainer between SDSU and USD, and, right? And I'm going to take South Dakota for this reason. I was with the Coyotes, too. Yeah. Right? Why is that? I just like, Seacamp's the best. You always go to the best yes. player, and yes. she is. I think Seacamp is the player down the stretch, and she's done it all year, too. She's been the player to take that last yeah. shot. She's been that Taylor Braun sort of Walters type of player that – uh, South Dakota State is very well balanced, but I think when push comes to shove, it's going to be a tight game. Yeah. I'm going with uh, with Seacamp. Although Macy Miller's not too far behind because she's a tremendous player for South Dakota State. If there's any of the other of those two teams in the championship game a week from now, that's a monumental upset in our mind. That's right? a shock. To play for the Summit League Championship. Let's talk about the Bison men going into this game. We mentioned Paul Miller now back. Uh, they're coming off a loss at Denver uh, last Saturday. Lost their final two games of the regular season. They're the five seed. Where do you see, can this team cause some havoc in Sioux Falls? Well, they're going to need Paul Miller to you know, come back to his 16.9 points per game uh, form that he displayed during the conference season. Dexter Werner is going to have to have a big tournament there, as we saw uh, just him powering it in. I just, uh, I, NDSU plays good defense, but they're really going to have to play really good defense, mm. I think, in this tournament. And it's possible. I mean, this is a year where it's possible. <laughs> IUPUI, they split with during the regular season. They lost a buzzer beater in Indianapolis in a game that, honestly, and Dave Richmond told us this, the Bison should have won that game. They were up 10 in the second half. Then they, they build a big lead against IUPUI and then saw the Jags nearly whittle that one away, and NDSU hung on to win. I think this is going to go right down to the wire on Sunday night. Well, I, really I guess do. history tells you that yeah. in this year, right? I think it's going to come down to somebody is going to have to get hot for NDSU in the second half. I, again, Paul Miller coming back, is his knee enough healthy enough for him to get open, I mean, to create his own shot. You know, they do that weave, as we saw uh, in the highlights out front. Yep. Looking for some player who can consistently just take it to the hole at will. Instead of weaving, weaving until eight seconds are left, and then all of a sudden, uh-oh, yeah. what do we do now? 
I truly believe, though, four teams are going to make the postseason out of the Summit League. Obviously, you'll have the NCAA qualifier. If Fort Wayne doesn't win the NCAA, doesn't win the NCAA bid, they'll go to the NIT. I think NDSU is going to play in a postseason tournament, and I think uh, Omaha will as well just because of now the amount of tournaments that are out there, which is a pretty good showing for the league. And you talked about this all year long of how high the RPI was. Right, and it's still hanging in, I believe, at yeah, number 12. And it really surprised me. It's still uh, within the Missouri Valley sort of range. And that's because they're, uh, they're not conference. I mean, beating four Big yep. Ten teams, four Big Ten wins. Yes. Was just, um, I mean, that carries you a long way. Now, is it a two bid league? Absolutely no. not. No, no, we're not saying that. No. no, it's one NCAA team, right. and then we'll have the CBI, the CIT, the NIT, and now the new Las Vegas 16, which I believe you're covering this year if you don't oh. get to go to the NCAA. Do I right? have to? I think we could twist your arm on that. Let's talk some pigskin here. The combine just wrapped up this past week at uh, in Indianapolis where Carson Wentz and Joe Haig performed. Both, I don't think, hurt their draft stock. If anything, I think they helped for both of them. Let's start with Carson Wentz and obviously what he did on Saturday. He ran, and we'll see it here in a second, what he did in the 40, which is a 4.79. But everyone wants to talk about what he does with his arm, and he was sharp on Saturday. He was sharp, and boy, he just looks the part, didn't he? He didn't look like this guy, quote unquote, from some of the national pundits, a Division II guy. <laughs> uh, he just showed strength. He's got that wide base, yeah. and that 4.75, is that what it was? 4.79. 4.79. Yeah. A sub 4'8 guy at his size, I thought was right. huge. I mean, you're just looking for holes there on this guy right now, right? Everybody's like, all the GMs, whatever, they're looking for to pick holes in the guy. <laughs> What's wrong with him? I just don't think they found anything yet. And the fact that he ran that, and then he was doing this, and I found out a new term. It's drop it in the bucket. And that's what he was doing here on these deep balls on Saturday afternoon because he was as crisp as we've seen him uh, since before he broke his wrist. Now, he's throwing to guys now probably 4-3, four, 4-4, four, four, and that's a little different from NDSU to the you know, RJs were more 4-5, four, 4-6, four, and Zach Fra. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see how he had it was interesting to see how he adjusted to that, yeah. and it looked like he did just quite fine. I'm curious now what he's going to do at his pro day. I, obviously, he'll throw a bit, but any of the other agility tests, I don't think he can do any better than what he did at the combine. You know, combine, I think what right? he's going to do, he's going to call WDAY and say, what do you want me to do? <laughs> what do you want me to no, do, Dom, for I would the cameras? To, I would like to race him in the 40 to see how many times he could beat me twice over probably in that. But I, I think, honestly, all he's going to do is throw. That's all he probably needs to do. Uh, and even if that, he probably won't do a whole lot about that between now. He'll get his own private workouts with teams that want to interview him, but I'm of the mindset he's going to be gone by the fifth pick in the NFL draft. I really believe that now. I'm still going top 10 or 12. Joe Haig was also at the NFL Combine, and he did uh, a, a solid job as well. He told us when he visited us on the radio show last Saturday, the one uh, skill drill or drill he didn't do was the bench press. He's going to save that for NDSU's Pro Day because he's still recovering from the shoulder injury that he suffered uh, at the Senior Bowl. But everything that, from what he told us, it seemed like everything went well in Indianapolis. Did you see that? That drill looked tiring. Yes. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. But he showed some speed here. Look at that. And the cone drills are big for guys like this. And, you know, the shuttle drills and the cone drills because foot speed in the NFL, well, it's big everywhere, but... Uh, you need to be big, but you need to be fast, and you need to be uh, we're quick on it. Look at that. That's that's pretty good stuff there. Yeah. That's a guy who is 6'6 six, six and 305 pounds. That's pretty good yeah, stuff. That, you wonder why Carson never got sacked much. <laughs> that's exactly right. His blind side here. And these were testing all. Now, this is an actual offensive lineman drill. I'm not quite sure what all the other ones would do, but that one. Uh, and then I asked him about this one on the radio. was the backpedaling one because he, he, he blew a tire here coming back, and this is not exactly one of the drills that you're <laughs> supposed to do, but... Uh, Everything he said that he, uh, things went well for him in Indianapolis. I don't know about those Sam Houston shoes on the guy. Well, those, those are all provided, I think, by the NFL. Mm -hmm. But everything we're hearing now is a day three pick for Joe Haig, which is pretty impressive for a guy who was not recruited out of high school. Uh, you know, you hear about those picks. Take it for a grain of yep. salt. I mean, you hear day three, we hear day three. Yep. I think you can be pretty certain that Carson's going to go first round for yes. sure, top ten, maybe top five, who knows. We don't know. Nobody's going to tip their hand. Nope. But as far as when you're talking second, third round, that to me is more of a stab in the dark. Let's talk some uh, moving and shaking. We haven't done expansion talk on this show in a long yeah. time, but some just breaking before we tape today. The Sun Belt Conference, according to USA Today, is reporting that after the 2017 season, Idaho and New Mexico State will no longer be in the league, which creates a vacuum for those two schools. There's only a couple schools that play independent schedules right now, Notre Dame and BYU. Now, Doug Fullerton, who's the outgoing commissioner of the Big Sky, 
re-extended the invitation to Idaho last fall. I'm of the belief, and I think you are as well, the Vandals are going to become the first school to move down from FBS and go back to the FCS ranks in 2018. Well, what option do they have? They have none. They're on, they're on that island that we talked what about. What options does New Mexico State have? That's a good question, too, because I don't know they where might, they would you go. You have to go down. There's no league. You're, what, are you going to join the WAC? And that's, well, that's gone. There's only that's WAC. What I'm yeah, there's no WAC football, so there's only basketball now. So they're on that island, and it's it's this is the – the template I've always warned against about for NDSU to move up because you have to make sure you have a, a home and travel partners, and Idaho never did. Once the WAC dissolved in football, they were they were hosed. You know, I think the Sun Belt's doing something pretty smart here, and I think what yeah. they're doing is what uh, Commissioner Tom Duple did when he took over the Midcon, which is now the Summit League, and that is he got it more geographical centered and he got a better footprint and it makes for teams that are happier they don't have to travel as far it makes for better student athlete experience and when he took over he came from southern utah and he actually sort of got rid of southern got, utah got, yeah, yeah. Got, rid of that, <laughs> got rid of the talk of yes. utah valley yep. joining uh, missouri kansas city i think was actually a candidate come back in yeah. because of geographic you know the centenary deal they had they ended up leaving they got and, rid of them. Uh, so i think what he did is he created stability by shrinking the footprint, and I think that's what the Sun Belt's doing. And also, that has a lot to do, Jeff, I think, why the RPI is where it is for the Summit League, because of now the geographic area of the teams, and they have made a, a conscious effort to be good in basketball, and that's why I think the rise up of where you've seen the league is where it's at right now. And you uh, cannot underestimate the the, the, the the emphasis on facilities yes. and money and, and investment in, in those uh, programs. This is a huge shot for Idaho, though, because you look in-state. Boise State was an FCS program, and obviously we've seen what the Broncos have done, and now you look at it on the flip side with Idaho, which had no success as an FBS program. What do they got, the Kibbe Dome? Right. Uh, which it's is, not an FBS no, stadium. No, and, and many that I've seen and, and many that have traveled there have said it's very comparable to the Unidome. It's not an FBS stadium. And, it's barely an FCS yeah, stadium, and that, really. And, and it looks like the Vandals will come back and become the 14th member of the Big Sky. Nothing is confirmed on that other than the fact that it appears they will no longer be members of the Sun Belt after 2017. Of course, Coastal Carolina got the invite this past fall. They will become full-time members of the league come 2017. So we'll keep an eye on that. Jeff will be down in Sioux Falls covering the Bison men starting this weekend. Of course, WDAY will be there with full highlights as well. For Jeff Kolpak, I'm Dom Izzo. That's the latest edition of the Bison Video Blog.